Jeremiah, this is new covenant. That's what we call it here. Which means it's a new agreement for 2,000 years to Adam and Eve and the family. Or the descendants of Adam. We're all one family. There is no such thing as a race, in case you didn't know that. They teach you that when you go to college and you take genetics. Everybody has 99.9% .9 basically the same genes. Race is based upon environment, nothing else. All humans basically lie, they don't tell the truth, they sneak, and that's the way most humans are. That's the way it is. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. So what's the difference in human beings? Nothing. Okay, now let's get going. As Jeremiah is smoking here, we got we got a very important lesson here. This is really where the rubber meets the road here, people. I, you brethren, out to you who, who 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 are loved by Jesus Christ, you you know that this is where everything kind of hits the road, and there are and some and some people are going to get saved, and they're going to leave some of these plastic edifices, you know, these crystal cathedral places. They're going to leave them and go to a real church, and they're going to be accountable for their behavior and how they dress and 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 the doctrine they own. Okay, and, and, and that's what I do here. We've had quite a few people who have been born again, people who have who, who have gotten on the right track who through this ministry, a lot of people. I had one gentleman come over to my house, and he was wearing goth gear, and he was smiling because he obviously has repented and so forth, because you can't you can't have a smile and be goth, or you know, or be punk punk rocker or rock and roll and satanic horns and all this kind of stuff and free sex and free drugs, you're not going to smile. The only smile you can have is a Cheshire cat. I'll say it again. The only smile you can have if you're in the world is a Cheshire cat. A lot of politicians I see on TV, you know, they're, they're smiling, but it's not a real smile. It's a circus smile. You, you need to be born again and to fellowship Jesus Christ in order for you to have a real smile. Otherwise, your smile is a circus smile. It's not real. This teenager came in there with a smile on his face. Yes, he still had some of his gothic gear on. And the, the Lord spoke to me and showed me that, that this guy, gentleman, you gave a Bible to, he is no longer committing, thinking about suicide, possibly. And you were the one who stood in the, in the gap, which is living bread. You laid down your life for what, what you're looking at. I could have went to a bar. I could have went to a, a Playboy Mansion or something. I, I could have partied. I, I could have went down Sunset Boulevard in, in Beverly Hills. I used to hang out there a little bit, but not with the party people. But I used to hang out there. Beverly Hills is a beautiful place. But I used to hang out there, drive my car through there. And uh, I see people partying, whatever. Well, I decided to have Bible study and support the pastors in the, in the inner city. That's what I decided to do. I'm not going to go into my personal life with you. I'm just telling you that we all have this decision to make. Uh, you know, are you going to eat living bread? That's what this is about here. You know, are, are you going to accept the, the denial and, and, the, and the, the problems that come with it? And man up, yes or no, okay? Now, let's get to 11.2 right now. As we greet you in the only name given amongst men, we, we call on that name, we believe on the name, we go in that name. It's a whole lot of stuff we do. We confess that name, right? We glorify that name. Uh, we do everything in one name here. Now, Jeremiah, what's 11.2 here? What's the second part of living bread? Well, it's basically the heartbeat. In other words, when you repented and you were baptized, you, you went through a ritual that, that signaled your life. That's what you did. And when, when, when Jesus left John the Baptist after being baptized, the fathers descended upon him in, in, in a spirit of a dove and, and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now, why is he well pleased? Because he's devoting his life to others. That's why. He's doing exactly what he said he was going to do in Luke 4, chapter 4. God's spirit is upon me to go out, basically, and put in American terminology, to help people. And the devil came and said, what are you doing? You don't have to help Jeremiah people. You can enjoy yourself. He said, well, I, I serve Father right now, and Father commanded me to go get people who are hurting. And if I hang around you, you don't help people who are hurting. You hurt people. You're just the opposite of Father, who wants to love people and take care of people. Oh, you, you destroy people. And God lets you do it based upon 
you being an op you being an option because that's what Jesus ran into in the wilderness that that's what Moses ran into in the wilderness which is an option you have an option to serve or not to serve that is the question and it's based upon the commandments and teachings of the Lord that's called living bread okay are you in or out here that's the point now let's get to some brass tacks here yeah, basically God is the number one steering wheel and he has commands your number two steering wheel will you listen and will you do them now I can I can I can enumerate them and I can look at your face as I've done off and on in my in my ministry look at the, look at the face of the people I'm talking to and I can generally tell uh, whether or not they're really on board and this is the litmus test basically here when you start talking about the bulk and maybe that's one reason why the Lord Jesus Christ and, and the Father decided to make most of the New Testament basically denial-oriented so that when you read the, the Bible to people, friends, family, whatever, you can look at their faces and tell whether they're on board because you're giving them the litmus test. I'll say it again. That's the litmus test. The litmus test is the lion's share of the verbatim from the Master. So they can't really avoid the litmus test. Unless they're really playing games on a checkerboard and they're hiding and sneaking. And if you're paying attention, you'll notice that they're hiding a lot of what we're, what we're going to get into right now. Okay? Which is the backbone of Christianity. Are you ready for it? Let's go. So number one is what are the, con the, the concurrent commands? You, you just gave us early commands, which are basically repentance and baptism and so forth. Now, what, what are the concurrent commands? And, uh, that the Lord spends most of his time on. In other words, you, you see repentance and baptism about 10 times or so in your New Testament. But why do you see like 30 or 40 times in the New Testament uh, denial scriptures? Yield, fall down on the ground. Why is that like 4 to 1, 5 to 1, maybe 7 to 1 ratio? Why is that? I don't know the exact ratio, but it, it's really heavy. Uh, along the lines of simple mathematics that uh, the master talks about denial a hundred times to one to repentance to being a child to being adopted and so forth and even much more than mercy I'm going to get into that a little later mercy is love and care and kindness why did that come in second place Because the big issue for most humans is pride. Probably, you, you, you can ask the Lord that. I, I'm not the Lord. I'm just sharing, sharing, you, sharing with you what's in my face. Okay, that's undeniable. I'm not going to go into whether uh, how much more uh, denial is more important to teach than mercy and care and and and, and kindness and all of that. Okay, that okay, that, that's that's for you to talk about with the Lord. That's, I'm not the Lord. <laughs> I'm just going to speak what I see mathematically, and, and that's what I like to do. I'm a very mathematical kind of individual. I used to teach some math. Now, I, I, was, I, I didn't have the math that my buddy Danny did. Danny, Danny was a math genius. And he was a roommate for a while. He told me his father was a better genius than he was, which I find hard to believe. But his, he said his father was more of a math genius, and I met him in a, in a machinist place. His father was a machinist, CNC machinist. And, uh, but anyway, this is simple math here, people. Let, let, let me stop right here. Okay, if, if Jesus says 100 times, take up your cross, uh, okay, then he, say, then he says to be merciful and forgiving three times. Okay, common sense ought to tell you that we're going to spend a lot of time talking about putting on a servant mind, like all the time. Okay, because we're going to read verbatim. And that's one reason why I want to do a lot of reading verbatim here. Right now we're going through a lot of vocabulary and context for you out there. Okay, we're going through a lot of definitions, contextual things. We're, we're, we're hammering home the 52 playlist here. And, and any, any day now, I'm going to, I'm going to shut down on, on getting a lot of in-depth analysis of your Bible. I'm not going to do it that much anymore. But and now those analyses will be here for you. But me personally, I'm going to shut down all of this. We're going to have 15, 20-minute Bible studies. We're going to make a few points. I'm going to shut down because that's where that's where I want this ministry to go uh, as far as a long-term goal here. You know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what I'm saying is, is that, that I don't want a lot of heavy Bible lessons up online. I don't want that. I want things broken down, you know, and, and segmented and so that it's easy to understand one this concept, that concept, 
And then when we read through the Bible, we're going to just refer to a couple of these items on the playlist, and I'm going to shut down. So we have a much more relaxed environment here and not a lecture hall. I don't want a lecture hall for Bible study. I don't want it. Most of the people who contact me online, they have a fourth to, to fifth to seventh grade academic level. So why why go there? Now there are some some lessons here that I'm going to I'm going to uh, share with you, and, and that's going to be along the lines of the April matrix. As we get off living bread for a moment, um, we'll get back to 11.2 in a moment. But um, we're going to have some things available for you for those of you who want to start putting things together. A lot of you out there are going to have the ability, and you're ready for uh, more than just baby milk. You're ready for, you know, get into the meat and, and steak and, and get going, okay? It's going to be available for all of you for whatever level that you want to deal with. Some of you might want to go to 19A, which is the first lesson basically in this ministry, and park there for as long as you need to, right? Some of you will get the 11, 12, 15 points I have for a, 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 a 19A, which is baby Christian walk, introduction, you know, how, where do we start, Jeremiah? Okay, that's where you start. Some of you can let that go. You already have all of those 12, 15 concepts I have. It's about 15 concepts for the first lesson for Christianity, and I have it available for you. Now, many of you already know the basics of believing on the death, burial, and resurrection, so you can go and move on. Now, as far as developing some introductory things, I think I'm going to skip that. You know, I, I think that, that if you don't get the first 12, 15 points, then why look for something else? Some of you need to stick with the first 12, 50, I forgot how many points I had on there, on 19A, which is the first lesson for baby Christians. That's the first thing we start out with. Some of you, you know, if some of you can stay there for a while, let, let's let that go. That's, that's between you and the Lord in your own time, correct? Now, let's get to the brass tacks here. These are the components of the commandments of Jesus Christ, and you agreed to listen to them Hear them and obey them. And, and, and we're going to get to the, the crux here, which is the menu of soul food is the diet for winners. This is the breakfast of champions here. Repentance and baptism are obviously part of your breakfast for to be a champion here and to fight a good fight, as Paul said, and to win this battle and to be what Jesus calls an overcomer. And that's what we want here. We want overcomers. So, so the point is, is that this is the diet for winners. And the question is, will Adam, you, you're Adam, you're Adam, you're, you're Adam, that's who you are. Will Adam be wise? Will he subject himself to these commandments and walk in them? This becomes the start of everything, because you want to be an Israelite, which, which means to be subjected to the Lord Yah, or to the Lord Jesus Christ. So you, you are now putting yourself in subjection, that's what Israel means. So now you're subjected, you have professed subject, subjection, and now you're going to walk in that subjection. And that subjection you're going to walk in is based upon you exercising your will to be wise, to listen to these commandments and speak them. Because whoever is ashamed of these, the Lord is going to be ashamed of you on his day. That's the whole point here. See, when I meet people that I can tell they're ashamed, uh, especially a lot of people in this day and age because we have a falling away of a fake church. So when you talk to people and you go, yeah, you know, take up your cross. Come unto me, all you who are burdened and heavy laden. And they go, I don't know any of that. What is that? You don't know any of that? That's living bread. You haven't eaten that bread? No, I haven't eaten that bread. There's a chance you might die. Men shall not live by what you're living on over there. You're going to die. All you're listening to is what the devil told you in the wilderness. And that's not good which is party, 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 uh, even though you were baptized. No denial for you. You want to be a gold brick in the church just sit, and, and just sit around and just collect. <laughs> Let's move on. So you, you need a heart attachment right now, and your mind and your heart uh, attached to wisdom now. So uh, the, 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 Lord said, the Lord said, where will wisdom be found? So now we're getting into what? We're getting into where, okay? Okay, we'll get into that a little bit more later, which is, uh, the Bible is clearly declaring that this is an option for you. Where will wisdom be found? Come unto me, if any man. Take up, put on, fall on, fall in. Can you present yourselves? 
Seek not. Let this mind. Who has believed? Pray in secret. Seek the low table. Learn to be. Put on the truth. Yield. To whomsoever you yield, that's who you belong to. Equip yourselves. Endure to the end. Keep my name. Unless you put on, take up your cross, you cannot be my disciple. You must take up the cross. So the, obviously, these 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 commandments to you from the Lord are basically second steering wheel oriented. In other words, the Lord is the one who put the commandments out there. You're the one who's going to have to grab them and steer them. Speak them. Put them on your heart. If you don't do that, the Lord's going to deny you on his day. Because you are ashamed of the nature of you denying yourself and not being proud of yourself. Which is essentially what this, what this is over and over again here. It's very simple here in American terminology. Okay? And, and so, oh, will wisdom be found in you? Come unto me, all you who are burdened. So come unto me. Okay? Okay, and the master contrasts that, which, which is come after me. So come unto me is, is, is diametric to come after me. Come after me means you're a straggler. You haven't put on a mind of servant, a servant mind to, to deny yourself and, and, and to love Jesus Christ by laying down your life for the brethren. You haven't done that yet, which means you haven't fulfilled the royal law and you are a loser. That's what's happening here. And you're not worthy of him. Because who wants to have people around them who don't love them, want to play games? Who wants that? Who wants fake people around them? Do you think the Lord wants fake people around them? I don't want fake people around me. Do you want fake people around you, false brethren? No. You're going to ask them to leave. The Lord said, you're not worthy of me. What's the master saying? That's a cornerstone scripture there which is in uh, Matthew 10 and elsewhere. I forgot the other reference. But he says, you're not worthy of me, which means that I love people and I care for people and I'm sincere. And you're not. So get lost. Quit following and hanging around. One, one of the worst things that can happen to you is somebody who likes to play games to hang around you. Play a game with your money, with your food, with your house, your car. Who wants some? That's the whole point here, people. You who love Jesus Christ and you love by Jesus Christ. This is very simple. And it is a cornerstone, basically, of Christianity we're talking about right now. Okay? Which is, you know, are you on the team here? Winners and losers here. Come unto me, not after me. If any man, if any man, okay, if, 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 there you, it's in your, the ball's in your court. Unless you repent. He didn't make anybody repent. They, they, you realize there were thousands and thousands of people called Calvinists who the Wesleyan University down the street used to argue with. I, I wouldn't have argued with him, but maybe the Lord wanted them to argue with, with the Calvinists. But he, Wesley's famous for doing that. Uh, uh, Wesley's one, one of the original churches here, <clears throat> excuse me, on the 13 colonies there with the Anglicans and the few Catholics and uh, obviously Quakers and, and, uh, and other uh, pilgrim-related people, <laughs> Mennonites, etc., Amish. But the point is, is that uh, the, a lot of Calvinists never came here. Thank God. There were thousands of Calvinists in the history of the European theater here for a couple hundred years. And we just read what Jesus said, come unto me, and uh, uh, unless you repent. Okay, what does unless you mean? Does it mean that God forced you to do anything? That's simple grammar. You're going to get on your knees. Calvinists believe, believe that you were forced to get on your knees. I'm not kidding you. You were forced to be saved. That's, uh, I'm laughing because it's absolute... Uh, kindergarten uh, the, uh, theology, it's really, really lame. We're not, we, we, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, in case you may, might be a Calvinist out there, but you need to get your grammar going so that you get to a fourth grade level. That After you read all of these scriptures pertaining to the command from Jesus Christ, and you can't see that, that the steering wheel is in your, the ball's in your court, and then you're, you're really, really doing very poorly as, as a grammar 
I've had third graders, I think, who understand it better than uh, thousands of adults. Now, you, have, you figure it out on your own, okay? That, that if you read all these commandments, can you drink? Uh, will you drink? Allow this mind. Uh, um, you learn to be the servant. Uh, yield to this. <laughs> you know, he who endures to the end shall be saved. But how can you be endured to the end and, and God's going to make you do something? No, you have to endure to the end. You have kept my name. Did God make you keep his name? You cannot be my disciple unless you pick up your cross. He said you pick it up. He didn't say he's going to pick it up for you. Let's continue. As we look at the second steering wheel in your life, is, is obviously what's going on here. Let's go back to this list again because this is significant because most of the emphasis of the master is based upon your second steering wheel and you listening to orders and getting, getting in line. And it demonstrates that you love the Lord. I love the Lord, but I don't do what he says. Okay, both of my parents told me that basically if I, if, if I love my parents, I'll do what I'm told. Can you understand that principle? It's not that complicated. The significant emphasis is to legitimize the volition and the yield in the field. That you're out in the world. They had a famous song here in America called Out Here in the Field. Out here in the field. We're all in the field here. This is war. And you're going to have to exchange, put on the cross, take up the cross. If any man, that's you. You're Adam. Come unto me. Fall on the ground. Fall on the stone. Okay, fall. You fall. Is God, going to, is God going to coerce you, push you? He sure is. Is he going to empower you? He sure is. But is he going to make the final decision basically for you? N wrong answer. <laughs> the Bible says to fall in the ground. What does that mean, Jeremiah? Fall in the ground. Fall on the stone. Well, you fall on the stone, that's living bread. You're going, to, you're going to break your will. You're going to break your pride. You know, I, I have some accomplishment. You're going to, that has to say bye-bye. Falling in the ground is the same thing. You're going to surround yourself with denial. A seed that goes into the ground is going to be surrounded by denial. Therefore, it can be fruitful. If you're proud going to the bar and jumping up and down, you're not going to love sister so-and-so who needs help across the street because you're not buried. Buried people are fruitful. People who are dead to self-pleasure and going to take me out to the ball game are going to be open to church service which basically is denial and saying no to the pleasures of the world. Okay, can you figure that out? I'm going to move on. I'm just about done here. So love no one more than me. Uh, present yourself as a living sacrifice. Uh, seek not deliverance. Allow this mind to be in you. Uh, who has believed in our report, which is the covenant? That's why I call this ministry New Covenant. Who's believed in the agreement here? Who's made an agreement? Who made an agreement to read what I just read, what we're reading right now, and to put it on your heart? Who, who's going to do it? Who's going to? Jesus said, "Seek the low seat." I seek the low seat. When Jesus said, "Give a banquet, invite the poor and the handicapped," is, is that Wall Street Journal conversation for Christianity in America? It's not. It contradicts uh, the basic premise of greedy capitalism. We're not picking against capitalism. I, I'm for capitalism, but I'm not for greed in capitalism. And, and I'm not for excess. I, I want to give me this day my daily earnings and, le and leave me alone. I don't need next year's anything. I, I trust in God. I don't trust in my money. Has not God chosen the poor who are rich in God, not in money? I'm, I'm rich in confidence in Jesus Christ. I'm not confident in money. I went to the bank here a couple of years ago, what was it? And I, I had a sign up there. But, you know, put your confidence in your savings and all of this. That, that, that's from downstairs. The master said, do not store up. So the bank is contradicting the master. Who's right, the bank or the master? I I'm going to follow the banker. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm following the master. Luke chapter 6, woe to you who, who are being consoled. Oh, give me more. Give me more pleasure. That's what the master said, woe to you. I don't want to be consoled all the time. I, I don't want to have extra this and extra that and party over here and luxury over here. I don't want any of it. I want to be consoled when I'm with the master. That's my con consolation. That's when I want to be satisfied and, 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 and boots on the ground. 
you know, in triplicate, you know, <laughs> exponentially, you know. It's not as though I'm not going to order and enjoy my dinner or something like that. That's not the point. The point is, is that I don't want a whole lot of nothing in this world. Take it. You can have it all. Because it doesn't it doesn't possess the love the love presence of Jesus Christ. So therefore, I can never prioritize it. I can appreciate it. I've had a lot of people tell me that since we're surrounded by Babylonians and greedy people in this world. Uh, they, they tell me, what are you thinking? What are you doing? Don't you appreciate it? No, no, listen, listen. You worship what you worship yourself in the mirror and you worship material things, and that's what you do, basically. And and I don't have a love for what you have a love for. And you don't understand that. You, you're looking for people who freak out over the mirror, over the, themselves and their accomplishments. And, and you, you, you're talking to a Quaker right now. I, I'm a Quaker dude. You know, we, we, we anticipate and prioritize the love of Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with, with what you're excited about. Okay? Nothing to do with your excitement over there, Mr. Man of the World. Okay? So you go on your merry way. We prioritize a life of living bread, which is fine with us because we don't love the world anyway. It's easy to trade in the world because you don't love it. I'll trade in my car, my house, my you, whatever you want, take it. The Lord will probably give me something better than what you took. Because that's Father, which art in heaven. And, and the conversation I'm having with you right now, you don't understand what I'm talking about because you don't know Father and you don't love Father and you don't prioritize the love of Father. That's why you talk the way you do, you act the way you do, and there's not much difference between you and the lion in the jungle. So God bless you and, and I hope things work out for you with your Babylonian animal ways, but we don't think the way you do over here. I seek the kingdom first and relax. I, I don't worry and talk about this and this income and all of, that. That's for that's for the animals and heathens. That's for that's for Goliath and his friends who who are Philistines. I'm not a Philistine. I have a circumcised heart and I don't have time for all this cold fleshly nonsense. Thank you. Do you mind singing that song far far away? And Jeremiah don't play. Let, let's continue. You know, okay, let's continue with these commandments of living bread. Okay, pray in secret. There, there's another one. There's living bread right there. How about seek the low seat? There, there you go. Learn to be a servant, which is one of the main ones we have here. Learn to be a servant is what we're doing. So the truth is, 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 is in the required submission. Truth is for me to be a Bible teacher and tell you that, 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 that submission is required of you. And I just get, and I just articulated it uh, from left to right in, in a thousand ways a Sunday. So we're done. That's the point. Also, when Jesus says abide in me. That's what he means by abiding in me. He doesn't mean abide in me, uh, you know, as far, as far as some sort of kindergarten perspective, you know, uh, of, of, let's have some cotton candy and, and, and let's play some music and dance around the, the chairs. No, this is very serious. It's very cognitive. And, and it, it requires a little bit of thought here. And that is for you to, to submit yourself, and that, that's the truth. The truth is, it's required of you, and for you to be in me, that's what Jesus said, abide in me. In order for you to abide in him, you're going to have to listen to what we're talking about right now. And, and, and once you do, you're a winner, and you've won the war here. The battle's over. This is essentially where the battle is, the battle is waged, what I'm giving you right now in 11.2. Now, there are some ramifications for all of these, such as you, you'll have peace of mind, the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll find rest for your soul. Okay, when you start doing these things, when, when I see somebody who doesn't have rest for their soul, I automatically know they're not eating living bread. I'll say it again. I know that people are not eating living bread when they tell me that they don't have rest for their soul. Because that's the only way to get rest, is to eat this living bread. There is no other way. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. You'll never own peace without doing what he told you to do, what I just went through. And when people tell me I don't have peace, you know, and, and whatever, or, that, or, or they can be dressed improperly, the chances are that they've never put on the yoke of Jesus Christ. They don't really know Jesus Christ but by, by the way they dress, by the way they talk, cursing, and so forth. 
You're not in subjection to Jesus Christ. Therefore, you can't own peace. Now, you can tell me you're happy, you watch the movie, you know, or whatever, here in America, wherever you live, you know, and we I have fun, you know, it's a circus or something. But as far as you having peace in, in, down in your soul and, and rest for your soul, you don't have it. And if you tell me you do, you're a liar. And the truth is not in you. Because the Master said, put my yoke upon you, then you'll find rest for your soul. You're not going to find it otherwise. Now, you can lie, but Jesus can't lie. Let's continue. So you're going to yield to something, and that yielding is the sound doctrine of living bread. The sound doctrine is basically the New Testament and your Bible. Everything, prophecy, uh, you name it, uh, science, history, that's called sound doctrine. But living bread is what we're talking about right now, which is germane to you being a successful individual in your Christian walk. Okay? You put this on, and we have a winner. Master uses the word overcomer. I should probably use his words, but we're, 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 we're using synonyms here. So Paul said, well, the Bible says to equip yourselves like men. So that's what, that, that's what this is, this Christianity stuff. When it starts getting down to rubber meets the road, we find out who the men and who the real women are. And we find out who's going to man up around here like I'm telling you right now, I just mentioned, this is one of the main litmus tests for uh, identifying people because the Word of God is powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, and it cuts right through the baloney. You walk, you want to hang around me? and I, I can cut right through to find out and discern the thoughts and intentions that you have. Are your thoughts and intentions to really love the Lord and to serve the Lord? Well, this, we just got a litmus test right here. I've had so many people tell me, I don't like that. I went to church, and, the, and my, my preacher told me that I was saved by grace or something, and, and we can do what we want to do kind of thing. Okay, no, 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 no. That's called wrong answer. That's a false teacher, 2 Peter 2.2. 2. Let's move on. So you kept my name. You endured to the end. Uh, okay, now we're getting into servant, servanthood at the end of the path. Because there's an introduction to Christianity, then there's the middle, and there's the close. All three of them require for you to endure hardships and to endure, uh, take up your cross daily and hold on to it in order for you to win all the way to the end of the marathon. The Master says in Revelation 2.3, you have kept my name. What does that mean? That means you hung in there. Okay, I, I don't want to paraphrase the Master too much, but I, I just want to say that, uh, uh, that what, that's, what, that's what it means in American terminology. Hang in there, go all the way with this. They had a song here famous in America years ago called, I'm going through. I don't care what the rest of the world's going to do. I'm going through. There you go. You cannot be my disciple until you put on a, a servant mind here. Now that's the third part of this ministry uh, pertaining to living bread.